Hi friends! Today, we will learn and revise the basic characteristics of living things. So, let's start! Have you ever been to a back country? You can see and observe a variety of living things in the environment. There are trees, birds, grass, deer, fish, lizards, ants, rats, and so many living things in the environment. Are there any more living things in this environment? Yes, there are a lot more that you can't see with your naked eyes. In the air, water, and soil. There are millions of microorganisms that we can't see with our naked eyes always present in our environment, even in the water, even in the air, and even in the soil. For example, take a sample of soil. It has lots of microorganisms that you can't see. Take any sample of water from any water body. It has lots of microorganisms present and that you can see with the help of a microscope, not with your naked eye. Even in the air you breathe, there are a lot of microorganisms that you can't see with your naked eye, but you can see them with a microscope. So, life is everywhere and in any environment. Now, we will conduct a small experiment to see the difference between living and non-living things. Here, we have equal amounts of sand and yeast. Sand is rough, whitish, and has larger particles, whereas yeast is smooth, beige in color, smaller in size, and ovular. Sand is non-living, and yeast is a living thing. Now take two clear bottles, add some sand to one and yeast to the other. Now add water and a little sugar. Take two balloons and cover the mouths of the bottles with them. The mouth of the bottles should be completely sealed by the balloon. Now look at the following picture. In the sand bottle, the sand has sunk to the bottom. No changes were visible in the bottle. The water is clear and the balloon is completely deflated. There is no air in it. Now, in the second bottle, the yeast seems to be floating in the water. The water has become cloudy and we can also see that some bubbles have risen to the top. And the balloon seems to be filled with some air. Now, let's study these changes. The sand balloon has no air in it. There is no change in the color of the water and nothing is happening with the sand. But, in the case of the yeast, the yeast produced bubbles and some gases because the yeast used sugar and water to produce some waste. The bubbles coming out is the waste produced by the yeast, which is why there is some air in the yeast balloon. It shows that as the yeast is a living thing, it respires, exchanges gases, and also uses the water as food. It shows that as the yeast is a living thing, it respires, exchanges gases, and also uses the water as food and produced waste. We can conclude that all living things use some source of food or energy and also release some gases and waste. Now, let's learn some more features of living things. The first feature is growth. All living things increase in size with time. Next is reproduction. All living things reproduce their same kinds. Next is the ability to repair themselves. All living things are able to repair themselves. Respiration. All living things respire or exchange gases with the environment. Energy requirement. All living things require energy to do various activities like reproduction, growth, movement, respiration, development, 
and metabolism. Next is response to changes in their environment. All living things respond to their environment. For example, all living things try to escape from their predators and to protect their young ones from predators. All living things arrange for food or a source of energy for themselves and their young ones. All plants grow in the direction of moist soil. All leaves face the sunlight to get maximum of it. All living things adapt to various environmental changes. Birds and animals migrate for better resources. Plants may grow in the direction of sunlight. The next characteristic of living things are that they have a definite lifespan. All living things have a definite lifespan. They grow for a certain period of time and then die. For example, humans live for about 100 years. Cows live for about 20 years. Pigeons have an average lifespan of 26 years. Mice have an average lifespan of 4 years. Foxes have an average lifespan of 15 years. And dogs have an average lifespan of 14 years. So, all types of animals, birds, and all other living things have a definite range of lifespan. The next characteristic is that they produce waste. All living things produce some kind of waste and release that into the environment. All animals, birds, produce sweat, urinate, defecate, and produce carbon dioxide as waste. Plants produce oxygen and water vapors as waste. And the very next important characteristic of living things is that all living things are made up of at least one cell or they are made up of only one or more cells. All living things are composed of cells. Some are made up of only one cell and some are made up of many cells. Even single cell organisms are able to perform all the life processes and are self-sufficient. In multicellular organisms, specialized cells are there for carrying out different functions. And in the case of single-celled organisms, different organelles of the cell perform different functions. So friends, today we have revised the characteristics of living things. We will learn about them in detail in our next sections.